What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Gettys. Got a new bomber jacket. I know to everyone watching, they're going to be like, is that new? I assure you it is. I assure you it is. It's really nice. Is it because you wore out the other olive bomber jacket, or is it because you just needed it? What's the thing? It's a a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because the other olive one was a very, very, very cheapo one. Like, that was a $20 jacket I got searching on Amazon for dope jackets back in 2015. Jesus. You know, today, as of recording, is our seven-year anniversary of Kind of Funny, leaving IGN, all that stuff, which is insane. But then it that also marks the seven-year anniversary of me first looking up dope bomber jackets on Amazon. Sure, sure. sure. So all of those – Big anniversary I for still, you. I know. It's huge. Um, I can still wear them because, like, they're not, like, falling apart on the outside, but a lot of the inside stuff is starting to get a little bit, like, you know, wear and tear that going a, on. Yeah, that's a long how – how often are you washing those jackets? And this isn't me saying you're oh, on Oh, definitely, it's just, definitely not enough. I, yeah, I'm okay, going to be okay. honest with you. But, you know, enough that, like, it's, you know, going to wear and tear over time. But I was like, I'm going to up my game just a little bit. So I'm proud to announce this is a $40 jacket. Whoa. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Double so the that's money. Gonna last 14 the years, probably. 14 years? Mm-hmm. Kevin, I'm and so the, you something. So the Patreon users know what where their money is going. Right here. Which is, yeah, okay. And uh, high quality. See, you know what's nice about this one, though? It's green on the inside. Green on the outside. None of that bright orange stuff. Oh. I kind of like that, though. It's yeah, me like too, I, I, over Over my break, I, or I guess leave, I fell in love with wearing the uh, kind of uh, PS I Love You jacket. And I like that flare of red in it when I open it up. You know, That's well, Nick Scarpino. Yeah. I'm sorry, producer slash seducer Nick Scarpino. What's your question? Kinda, it's kind of like the pop of orange inside the Miyagi Miyagi Do uh, geese. Tim will get that reference. Andy, this question's for you. How hard do I have to grind in this game to get the other color variant for Tim's avatar? Like, is there one where it's blue and blue? Is there one where he has rope tied around him? Like, how hard? How many? How many nights do I have to put in? What? On that? <laughs> Rope tied what are you even trying to get he was like, out of The gears were rolling. He was making this very detailed video game reference. No, there's, there's, no, there's, no, 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 the the rope tied around him. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You guys think I'm crazy. Because <laughs> I am a little crazy, Greg. But there is a legit one of the one of the avatars or one of the operators I used to play when we played Warzone yeah. looked exactly like Tim. And there was a variant where he was like a mountain climber and he had rope. A tire oh. this way. And he looked exactly like Tim Gosh, looks you. right now. Uh, sure. Kevin, of course, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. He'll bring that up. Well, That's actually, right. Kevin, bring up the thing I sent you. I you saw you working on right there. Like this, you, you know, you say seven years ago, Tim, is when you Googled and, or I'm sorry, Amazon and found dope bomber jackets. I have this photo. Mm-hmm. You might be in this photo actually looking for yeah, dope bomber jackets. That, that's actually why I brought it up in this photo. I, you know, we're launching kind of funny. Meanwhile, I was on Amazon. There I am, yeah. fervently looking at at different bomber jackets. Sure, sure. Yeah. And here we are. It's the most important thing. <laughs> that's the kid. That's that it's all right there. Thanks, Kev. Perfect. No, it just looks a lot like Tim what? does right this second, doesn't it's just it? He's wearing a beanie. That's the only that's yeah, the only looks thing that's all like Tim right now. It looks exactly <laughs> like Tim. Look at him. Tim, give me that give me that uh, look right there. No, looks not exactly man. like him. The, his yeah. hair, the beanie, the shirt. Jesus. And then rounding out the quartet, he's the Hispanic heartthrob, Texas Street Latino Heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting, head shotting, nitro rifle from Twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. Oh, baby, it feels so good to hear that once again from our fearless leader, Greg Miller. Back at it, baby. I can't wait to get you back in San Francisco, Andy. You look at you still over there in the RGV in your dad's extremely large chair. Looking like a 11 year old <laughs> sitting there playing computer day games. So your dad. dad, turn on Flight Sim. Flight Sim isn't working. <laughs> Let's play some, what was it, Putt Putt? Putt Putt the Magic Car? Putt Putt the Magic Car, yeah, yeah. No, I never had those. I had like some shitty games that um, were just kind of, uh, one of them was a brick breaker. Sure, there was mm-hmm. one sure, there. Sure, 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 sure. It was a lot of the pinball game. It was a lot of that stuff, guys. Andy, did you see? recently that it was discovered that that pinball game actually had other maps but you had to pay for them to get them so the space one was the only free one so everyone just assumed it was the only map there was in the the windows pinball game maybe i know this was one of the maps called pangea I mean, no, Pangea was, you know, Pangea. Time before everything broke up. <laughs> P- Pangea pinball machine. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait, I think it? I did know this, Tim. No, I lied. Didn't know no, this. I didn't know this. He, didn't know, he thought it today. Mm-hmm. 
I used pinball to have windows. Pinball windows. I just didn't like the commercials. There you, tell you me go. The, you telling me the little kid that I showed him didn't look more like him than this guy? This guy, I looks, exactly. this guy looks aside, way more like him. Aside yeah. from the blonde he's wearing hair. wearing the same colored hat. Aside from the blonde hair. The little kid was wearing a gray hat, a beanie. Oh my God, there's so many things wrong with this. I what love is, it. There it is. Look at that. Look at that. You got it right there. Yell at Gia. Have Gia bring some rope. Get cool. Get cool. Bring some rope. <laughs> they, they, some rope. See, Greg, they got a lot of rope floating around that house. They just don't want you to know about it if you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Ooh. I see what you're doing. Bonjour, bonjour. Wow, Tim, there's a lot of mm. levels in this game, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real quick, you'll yeah. see, baby. You, you lucked out on that, Nick. That, that <laughs> you skated by on that one. Okay. What was that? What does that mean? <laughs> Uh, Andy opened his mouth. What does like, that mean? Get Nick Bender writes on Moju Moju <laughs> talking about robes, and Andy's still talking about the game. I was okay, like, all right, well, that yeah. could have been. I thought I just inadvertently said something Nick. horrible in French because you know sometimes no. I do that. I, mean, I think Moju Moju is nothing. I, I hate the idea of Nick making sounds and then being like, oh no, what did I say? <laughs> like that's just hey, the Tim, worst. That's the world we're living in now, bro. Yeah. I can't even make mouth noises anymore. <laughs> no, you're you're that's making fun of a language though. Just to be fair, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, because it's French, we we nobody we respects the French. We, give it a we pass. don't give a fuck. Yeah, okay. any other language, you would have been in a lot of trouble. Just so you know. Oh, oh, totally, totally, totally. But that's why I, I pick my the languages to make fun of very delicately, very there's selective. A lot. Yeah. There's a there's an algorithm going on up here, wow. and it says A plus B plus X factor equals laughs, and the laughs come out of my mouth. Damn, Greg, that's a new thing for you. You missed that. So your yeah, you're making yourself laugh. That's that's that's. <laughs> More often than not, I'm the only one laughing. <laughs> More often than not. <laughs> if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kind of Funny Podcast each and every week for sometimes five best friends gather on this table, each coming with a topic or bullshit they want to bullshit about. If you want to bullshit with us, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Of course, you can write in to be part of the show you can be a patreon producer you can be watching live like my trogs are uh i saw joey noel I'm like she's not one of them edwin uh joshy g john blizzard cody are all hanging out right now in the live chat with each other and of course me as i look at them and slowly sometimes pull them in pepper in. of course pepper. on patreon.com slash con- oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, slow every emergency break here you know what i mean uh nick scarpino what do you got for me the trog joke greg yeah. you have no idea how much they ran that into the ground when you were gone and they did. The audience? Yeah. <laughs> the the it's track. just a live track. It's yeah. just a live track. They love it. They're proud of it. Oh my God, Let me tell you, this is what I've talked about for seven years now, is that our audience, we love them. We couldn't do it without them. And these yeah. bastards love being talked down to. Have you, again, I called them troglodytes once on a show, and they're yeah. all like, trogs! <laughs> they're, all, they're all stoked <laughs> to be troglodytes who are in the live chat. And I was with them a few times. They love it. They love being trogs. They're the trog game. At one point, Trog Gang or something like that. Yeah, they call their Trog Gang, their right. Trog Life. Yeah, yeah you got yeah. uh, Yazin is there right now. Trog Life, they're all about it, yeah. Oh, God, I, I... Let them band together. And this, again, seven years ago. What are we going to call our audience? Best friends? And I was like, scumbags. <laughs> call them scumbags. No, nope, no, nope, nope. here we are. We would have three million subscribers right now if we were the kind of funny scumbags. Point of clarification, both both of those names came out of you. You were came up with both of those. But you know how it is, Nick. I... Am ying and yang. All right. <laughs> you yes, are. you are. Yes, you are. I, I want you to know it's been three months of paternity leave. I am ying How many and times yang. do you think I've been walking around with little baby Benjamin, bopping him around, having a podcast with myself in yeah. my head? Oh, and Greg, I'm well aware. Laughing. I'm well aware of More the most. amount of times that you think this happened. Yeah. I don't know how you would know so much about it. You know, it doesn't sound. Who's at the front door? It's a package. Oh, was that Is Tim? That, me? that was me, yeah. Sorry, oh, I don't know why I was so loud. <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, we're about to get a drop in at Andy's house in the RGV. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Let's see how this one fans out. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, patreon.com slash kind of funny. You can watch live. You can get the show ad free. And of course, you get the post show we do exclusive with each and every episode. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. There are plenty of ways to support kind of funny for free. Uh, one of the easiest, of course, is using our epic creator code, kind of funny, all one word, whether you're actually on the Epic Game Store, whether you're just buying V Bucks and Fortnite on your switch if you sync it up with our creator code that gets us money and doesn't do anything to you plus you can watch the show for free on youtube.com slash kind of funny you could watch it on rooster teeth you could watch it or listen to it for free on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday housekeeping for you 
as I've said several times, and probably will say several more times throughout this show, uh, kind of funny, is seven years old today as we record this. However, we're not going crazy, crazy with the celebration. We have a brand new studio we are almost done with, kind of, sort of, hopefully, God, please. And when we move in there, that's when we're going to do the big old shenanigan party stream, hang out, get crazy, blah, 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 new shows, whatever the hell we do. However, that doesn't mean we're doing nothing. Uh, this Friday, January 7th, we are celebrating seven years of Kind of Funny. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Come hang out with us all day long as we shoot the shit, order some pizzas, play some games. Andy keeps talking a good talk about everybody's golf, but he hasn't put it on the schedule, so he's probably a coward and never will play me. I don't, I, look, you tell me when to show up. You tell me when my tea time is. I'm going to show up, okay? Uh-huh. And okay. basketball shorts and basketball shoes. I never wear golf apparel and sometimes mm-hmm. they don't let you golf there tim did you know that if you show up to a golf place with like just basketball shorts mm-hmm. sometimes they're like Mm-mm, get yeah, out of no, here that, I mean, that's country clubs right that's why i mean like they're super racist already let alone if you show up looking like you're, you showed up for the wrong sport you're yeah you're definitely you're definitely right there but a lot of times we just try to like sneak on uh we try to go golfing several times while i was down here and we never we never went partly because it was my fault and my brother wants to go at like seven in the morning yeah it's just, that's horrible what are you doing at seven in the morning you know what i mean your day right man wait I what do you, you say? I, get, I get up at 5 30 nowadays and let me tell that's, you i, I wonder I, why I, I, I can feel the <laughs> i've invented a new schedule like you know what i mean joey noel commented t- uh, today when we were t- uh, joey noel celebrating five years of kind of funny day congratulations uh joey noel commented today on slack her and i were talking about something completely different she's like and also you're sending email replies to patreon kids at like 11 15 at night and i was like would you also like to know that that was after a 45 minute peloton workout because i do that at 10 30 now I'm insane, ladies and gentlemen. You got to take whatever hour you can get now. Whatever minute you can have, you go and do it. So, yeah, Greg, your brother's got kids. Of course he's waking up at 7 or at, playing golf at 7. Where's the Peloton? Where is that located? Uh, so you remember how long our living room is? And so there's right. those stairs in the, like right next to the windows there where we had nothing. It's there on the uh, little pad. It looks really nice. I was really it, concerned it was going to look like bike? shit, but it looks good. This is the bike. Yeah, I did the bike. Oh. And, and do you remember how long their living room is? It's it's on the roof. They put the pellington. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long the living room is? It's in the basement. It's up back. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you, speaking of 5 uh, a.m., of you waking up at 5 a.m., I have a, I, I wanted to play this message that you sent to me at 5 p.m. That oh, sure. we, I had put on, on the mm-hmm. kind of funny account, and I was really worried about you coming back. Uh, but <laughs> for those of y'all who don't really read socials, this is a message that I got um, on December 26th, the day after Christmas, um, 5.30 p.m. Here we go. Lots of silence, of course, in the beginning. Andy, it's Greg. It's raining here in San Francisco. Took your advice. Been doing drugs every day. (laughs) (laughs) You're an idiot. Now, you might say, why would I send a message like that? And it's twofold, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, of course, Andy's not in San Francisco. He deserves to know if it's raining or not, right? Everyone wants to be kept abreast of the situation. Maybe he left the window open. He wants to call Barrett. Barrett's got to go in there and close the window. Number two, I go to court take andy down if i get arrested for drugs one day it looks like it was all andy's fault and then i get to flip on him i'm watching a lot of sopranos it could be a rico case i get to be the informant i make up a bunch of stuff right again i just call barrett i tell him hey and that weird hidey hole you got with the broken air conditioner heater up there that doesn't do anything hide some drugs you know what i mean and then Mm we write andy on it like in toy story font you know what i mean (laughs) you know i I, i'm not too aware of how courts work like officially and legally and all that stuff i jumped ahead i wouldn't it wouldn't be a court thing it would be when they arrested me then they gave me to flip were you gonna ask about a rico (laughs) tim were you gonna gonna ask (laughs) that i I was gonna say like i'm not sure the best evidence is this soundbite of you telling andy that you're doing (laughs) drugs because he told you to while laughing hysterically (laughs) with the sound of rain in the background it's like i'm not so sure this one's gonna hold up Tim, you think that's the flaw in his plan? Not the fact that he's going to go to Barrett to get him hardcore drugs? <laughs> yeah. And Barrett's Barrett, like, yeah, I got, I got, go I got, some I got drugs. a line of a kilo of cocaine. Why not? <laughs> no, he doesn't have it already, but you need to remember, of course, Barrett is CEO Junior, all right? And he mm-hmm. takes that job very seriously. Yeah, thanks for that. Barrett is mm-hmm. one of the people that I say is D. To see, and that's down to clown. All right, this guy is ready to do stuff. And if that means buying a pie for me to throw at Andy or pinning cocaine drugs on him, he'll do it. 
Barrett's down to clown. He'll help me out, and I appreciate that. Barrett, I do like, you see. Thank I you for like that. in that spot, by the way, where he had to be co-CEO and totally lie to us for an entire day, and then you had to come in with your madness. Poor Barrett. It, that was all Barrett. You know what I mean? Like, I love it. You know, I love a good joke. And he hit me up the days before. And he's like, if I win this thing, I'm going to give it back to you. And yeah. I was like, I will pay attention to the CEO battle in Mario Party then to be able to run in if it happens. And so then it's, you know, me bouncing this baby, burping this baby or whatever. And then constantly checking. And I'm like, I, you should see me pop up in chat. Twitch chat was noticing where I'd be like, how many more turns are left? Like 30 or whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So long. I was literally like, how long will that take? And they're like, I don't know. Like, right, I'll see you guys later. I'll be back for that. You got to be on top of it. You know what I mean? It's guys, guys being on top of it, ladies and gentlemen. Our Patreon producers are always on top of it. Let's thank Delaney Twinning, James Davis Makes, a.k.a. I'm sorry, James Davis. Uh, Bionicle in Review 2022. Praise Portillo. Greg Miller's back and better than ever. And Prankski. Uh, today we're brought to you by Upstart, Raycon, and ExpressVPN. But I'll tell you about that later. Tim, you were about to say something. I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, uh, before the break i got to go down to la got to go to the spider-man premiere already oh, talked about that it was awesome it was fantastic greg we haven't really talked about it but it was really really cool but if i could again i'm just going to jump in here as uh -huh. a proud member of the trog community someone mm -hmm. who listens to the show and is in the live chat I, I told you this when i got down to watch spider-man with you and I, I think i told each one of you i don't know if i actually had time to tell andy but i have to applaud you Again, I'm in, I have such a unique perspective now. Three months on the bench, just being uh, a listener and uh, a viewer. A trog sometimes. yourself, yeah. A trog myself. You guys, and I guess me too, at, the, or at least our company, but you guys, especially in this situation, are the masters of bullshitting. Where I remember seeing the time codes go through that day. I looked at Slack and I was like, oh, they have some weird funny stuff in here, but whatever. And then getting in the car and be like, oh, I have time to listen to the podcast and hear Tim's story about going to Spider-Man, uh, the premiere. And I popped in and it started and I was like, right they bullshit around for like 45 minutes i'm never gonna get to the uh, but i'll be at the theater long before i get to this story and mm -hmm. i thought about skipping and i was like no i don't want to do that i'll miss some kind of insight and listening to you morons fucking talk <laughs> about what it was it the nachos yeah. or the quesadilla or whatever the the maz mozz act the, the mozzarella oh, yeah. sticks Not the maz ma i was like i was in hysterics driving this car and i totally forgot that i actually wanted to hear tim's real story instead it was mozzarella sticks and how many mozzarella sticks you motherfuckers should order and eat really <laughs> important, conversation. important conversation it was, it was great. great it was yeah. great so i once I want, I, now that i'm back i want to again applaud you for being so goddamn good i'm sorry though tim you were saying yeah no 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 so in, in that i got to go it was great but uh i showed a lot of pictures and it was super fun in the last episode i there was one picture that i don't think i showed in that one that i wanted to bring up now that we have a little bit more time to talk about it this has been something that i didn't necessarily know if i wanted to bring up on the show because it's really fucking stupid but yeah, i realized that's what this whole thing is and i need to get your thoughts about me and my thoughts on this sure okay great okay. here uh, i am so you're an audio listener yeah mm -hmm. okay, go ahead. Go ahead. you know what greg i want you to just explain it before i give tim my is, tim has given us a, a photo here from a cell phone he mm -hmm. is uh i would say a row 22 25 of a united airplane uh, he is taking the photo down it. He's he's in the middle seat with that. Um, you're in the middle seat shooting over. You're on the left side of the plane shooting into the middle of the aisle here. And we see a man in a pinstriped uh, collared shirt standing in the middle of the aisle, a woman with a beret in her hair and a flight attendant maybe checking the first class cabins. What am I looking at here? What am I seeing? So you, you nailed a lot of that. You got a lot colors, wrong, but that doesn't matter. What matters here is is the woman with the, the hair up with some form of hair tool. Exactly. Yeah, a clip in, in oh, her hair. There it is. So it. I'm Brett. looking at this, and what is it about my broken ass mind that my first thought that I could not get out of my head is this looks like if Nick Scarpino was a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, wow. I see it. I see it. I wow. see it so clearly. <laughs> <laughs> like it's missing some eyes. <laughs> but, no, but, but I see. But I see where the eyes are supposed to be. Right. No. Like, it, the middle and that, lighting that is part the of nose. the hair is the nose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see it. I I'm, I'm right sitting here now. on this plane like, <laughs> what? That's Nick. He's That's here. Unbelievable. You're doing the thing that our subreddit does where it's mm -hmm. like just any bearded guy looks like Nick. Nick but uh, I mean, Tim, yeah. you're not wrong on this one, dude. Thank it you. It well, kind of reminds me that it's not that wrong either. You know what I mean? Lots of times, I, yeah, the bearded I, people in stock photos do look like Nick. Madeline Stanley in the chat says, put an orange beanie on it. Oh, Christ. Here we go. Should I do it right now? I'll do no, it. Here's the next. Here's the next year of my life on Twitter. Whenever I check Twitter, it's like here's more beanie pictures for you. Uh, Nick, it could be a lot worse. Just so you know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. 
this is be a lot worse and per and perpetuated by somebody a lot worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very true. You know what's funny, Tim, is I actually just watched the um the Sesame Street documentary on HBO, which if you guys haven't watched. I actually highly encourage you to. It's very, very good. And I did not know a lot about Sesame Street having only, like when I watched it as a kid, you didn't understand all the, the relevancies of it. But it's, re it's a really, really cool look at that. And it's one of those things where like right when they started playing this, the theme song to Sesame Street, I like started tearing up and I was like, fuck, I think this show meant a lot more to me than I remember <laughs> it meaning. Like, because I, I, was, I always thought to myself, well, I'm like more of a Muppets guy, but I didn't, it's a stupid kid. I thought there were, I thought there was like a line in the sand. Between you were either a Sesame Street <laughs> like kid or a DC Muppet kid. or Marvel, <laughs> exactly. Not realizing that, of course, there was a ton of crossover and like Kermit was like, you know, in both. But uh, anyway, sorry, non sequitur on that one, kind of. So following up on that, in the most concise way possible, what what's going on with Elmo? Is he canceled? No. I just keep seeing oh, I just keep seeing Elmo trending, and I'm like, this he's not dead. <laughs> no, I think maybe the guy that puppeteered him had some controversy potentially. Okay, here's what here's what I got. Here's what I got. Uh, yeah, okay. Something about he has a beef with Rocco the Rock. I'm gonna read from NPR. <laughs> yeah, read from so NPR. Much better than I expected. <laughs> Elizabeth Blair's article. What's making us smile? Uh -huh. That time Elmo lost his cool over Rocco. Oh, there's a video. I guess we could just watch that. Uh, Let's just watch that. That's amazing. <laughs> Wait, so, is that all? so that's why Elmo is canceled? I don't think he's canceled. I think oh, we were just oh. joking about it. I think that might be a joke. No. I'm confused by it. I'm, I'm, I am, I'm very confused. I'll read the article Watching if you want. That, Here you go. Watching Elmo, that losing his, Elmo losing his last nerve feels so good right now. With Omicron raging and the prospect of more mass shutdowns, the beloved Muppet yelling at his pal Zoe's pet rock, Rocco's just a rock, is downright cathartic. Thank you for sending the clip uh, to Sesame Workshop. This is episode 4077 from May 3rd, 2004, titled Elmo, Fe Elmo Feels He's Treated Unfairly by Rocco. Uh, the Sesame Street episode is, of course, some kind of lesson in sharing and waiting your turn. Zoe asks if she can join Elmo's play date with her friend Gabby and brings along her friend Rocco. When Elmo wants to say the alphabet, Zoe says Rocco wants to jump. They compromise. When Elmo wants to go to the next tire swing, Zoe says, no, it's Rocco's turn. But when Zoe won't let Elmo take Rocco's oatmeal cookie because, hey, rocks can't eat, Elmo can't take it anymore. Rocco's <laughs> a rock, Zoe. Rocco won't know the difference. As of this writing, the tweet that we just saw has a whole bunch of life. As of this writing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you updated and impressed yeah. in the situation. Kev, thank you for bringing up this, this screen we're looking at here where <laughs> there is an article that says Elmo's right about Rocco and it's time we acknowledge that. Elmo's been beefing with the Rock since 1999, which is the best picture of Elmo. It's like, such a good picture. It's yeah, such a good cracked out of his mind. This is isn't he canonically, isn't he three years old? I don't know, no, man. I think now I, he's got to be at least. That's like the picture that that no, Fox News would pick if like posting a Joe Biden <laughs> article. Mm -hmm. Like they want to make him look insane. <laughs> Great job, <laughs> sensationalist right there. I'm almost done with the beanie Photoshop. By the Thank way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Great. That's, that's, top, yeah, that's top priority. Mm -hmm. That's top priority. That's top priority. Um, yeah, you mentioned what do we got here? Still three, three years, years old, old. for Elmo? Yeah, Kevin. When I was saying he's like a 45 year old, what I meant was he sounds just from the the, the amount of energy. And anger behind his words. He sounds like a 42 year old Italian man that's on a podcast. Same height. You. How dare you? Don't. <laughs> now, you, now, come on, Kevin. You know that kids watch this show. You just ruined Elmo. They absolutely <laughs> not. We talked about that. Remember when we said we we're kid friendly? And you said, yeah, I fucking love kids. <laughs> Bring us your kid, I think is what you said. Let us have your kid or something like that. Well, it was, there's been a lot of good stuff going around about me losing my mind coming back from paternity leave and having all this pent up energy. Uh, but it was shit, fuck. I want to say it was Emma Watkins <laughs> Jr., but it might not have been. Uh, somebody who, like on the day of when I put up one of those videos, reminiscing about when I tombstone pile drive that kid at yep. Kansas City Comic Con. Mm -hmm. And right. if you remember, that was after, that was tr me trying to make it up to him after he brought up a sign in the middle of the show that was like, we love you. And I grabbed it and I was you in the middle of some rant. Up. I screamed at him and threw it back in his face. And as soon as it left my hand, I saw him start to get like 
I, I grabbed him like, no, no, sorry. Took it too far. Took it too far. Get up here for the joke. That poor kid's scarred for life. He'll never make a sign again. Still, <laughs> I love that you were like, cry. wait, I love that he was like devastated. He was actually devastated. You, I believe you tore up his sign or you wrinkled it and then uh, threw yeah, it I into his face. It up and threw it back in his face. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like he was sad. And tougher, you, your mind was like, no, don't worry. I'll, I'll do a wrestling move on him. Now, remember, it wasn't, straight, so <laughs> it wasn't straight tears to the Tombstone Pile Driver. It was tears, and then I scooped him up and brought him on stage, and we made him part of the show, and everything was good. And then I forget, yada, 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 then I Tombstone Pile Drives. There's yeah. something happened in the middle of the show. You, you, you whispered in his ear, like, are you down to rough house? Or you said yeah. something <laughs> along. I don't remember that, but I love it. He, he, he didn't there, know what that if meant. If someone he is still animating it. kind of funny bits, please do. Actually, <laughs> Close up of this kid's ear and my eye. Are you down to rough house? <laughs> you said, no, it was Andy, something not, along that phrase. Let's but go he ahead. didn't understand, right? He was like confused <laughs> by it. God, and no, you were like, terrified. good enough. Good enough. What? Yeah. Look, even if he understood, there's no way that this kid's going to be like, oh, yeah, rough house. Like, oh, me and my dad do that. We kind of He did not expect me to be two stone pile driven. No. It, it was it was. And rough if you were house, there at Kansas City, ladies and gentlemen, was. I went the full nine. I cross, I grabbed his arms, I crossed them, and I did the Undertaker thing. I fucking I was yeah. there for it. All right, don't worry I'll about say, it. It's it's just a nice analogy for the circle of life, right? Sometimes you get really excited about something, and then the, you make a sign for it, and then that thing takes the sign and it tosses you back back in your face. But then it brings you up on stage, and everyone, and you get a taste of what it feels like to be a D list celebrity on the internet. And then that thing takes you, and then it pile drives you into the ground and compresses two of your vertebrae. There are a lot of things you could take away from that in your body of real life. You know what I mean? Circle of life. Things that could happen right there. Circle of life. And that's the thing right now that kind of sucks about Benjamin is that he's still too small for me to throw around. Like, I'm stoked for when we get in that I, period where I can just start choke slamming this kid left and right. I've told Jen that once he is of age, we will institute a 24 7 belt in this house. Yeah. That means when we're like at a Target or whatever, like it could pop off. And then Jen's got to hopefully have a like a referee shirt on at all times to be yeah. ready to make the count. Because I was like, that's what I need for even, even. Okay, I understand you don't want to wear the referee shirt all the time. That's fine, but I need you to be the ref and make counts. You know what I mean? Can, it's gonna be we... so great when this kid turns like seventeen and is hanging out with his friends at a Target, and all of us fucking goons just oh. tackle them, oh. and cameras come out, and he's just yeah. like, "Dad, I just want to be an accountant. I don't want to be a part of this world. How many times have I told you?" And Greg's like, "I am not down to rough house. I'm not down to rough house. <laughs> no, that, that even even better. It's you know we've had a lot of, and I know that you know I'm not going to name names. Some people think our comedy's highbrow. Some things it's lowbrow. People who make the comedy with us. But we had, of course, one of the classic classic kind of funny stories of Rimothy, right, and Paula Paula's wedding, and some throats <laughs> getting slit and all these things, right? Like, man, I'm sorry, that, what? <laughs> right what are, right there right there right you already leaned into another great one of like yes and now it's real though right now the prophecies are coming true but yeah imagine benjamin and his friends are out at applebee's right they've just seen whatever movie the new the 30s or i guess at the 64th marvel movie right they we drink margaritas too, right? no they're too young at this point oh, but sure. they you know they come and they put the bill down and benjamin goes and grabs it and then the waiter leans into the air and just goes are you down to rough house? And he's like, oh shit, and it's me. And it's cookie sheet to the face, and we're brawling through Applebee's. You know what I mean? God, I love that. Jen's I would the love that. Nick's there doing the commentary. We got a whole thing. Can he? <laughs> Some can, manager's can, like, what? We just hired him. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah, like, he went through the I'm whole process. Even, I, I actually embedded myself <laughs> to make it happen. It's, it's like tag. If you went through like two interviews to get the job, it took three months just on the off chance your kid would show up. I know he great. loves Applebee's. He can can old Benny uh, establish his move as the Hurricane Rana? I hope so. Yeah, because I want you to establish your move as the Jackknife and Jackknife Power. I'm sure. I, yeah, the Jackknife Power Bomb. Because I want there to be situations where you don't know which way it's going to go, and there's going to be See, moments where old Benny jumps on you trying to give you a Hurricane Rana, but you catch him and he's stuck in the air, and he's like, no, 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 and you're like, oh, and the crowd goes crazy and big old Power Bomb. Oh, right dude, there. Andy, in the I middle of the Applebee's. Eventually, <laughs> we're gonna. Well, I guess we'll be back at RTX, or whatever. You know what I mean? You, me, Benjamin. I don't care about anybody else, but we're hanging out at the pool, right? Mm -hmm. I will be. I will put on a power bomb display for you, Whoa, right? Of just shit. throwing this kid around, <laughs> and that, that is the one thing we do need to think about as we just. And like, don't get me wrong, like, oh man, Greg's already picking his uh, kid's finishing move. That's kind of too. Far. We'll give him a few to choose from. We won't just tell him what to do. But yeah. what you need to think about, of course, is that for as small as this kid is, right? 
<laughs> what you need to think about. The power bomb is going to be a great finisher for me. Great finisher uh-huh, for me right. to do stuff to Andy. But Hurricane Rana, remember, I'll be his only opponent for a long time, right? I am not capable of doing the somersault to land a Hurricane Rana appropriately. So we might mm-hmm. actually be painting him into a corner there where all <laughs> the move can only be reversed. <laughs> like there's, <laughs> there's no way I'm going through the motion of you the set Hurricane him up Rana. for failure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you never take the, I can't do it, son. So you have to lose. <laughs> See, sorry, I like sorry. the idea. Give him, give him the RKO. You know, you just got to get his hops sure. up yep. so we can yep, get yep, up yep. that height. Because I, the visual of this is amazing. The small little BJ just popping up there, grabbing mm-hmm. you out of nowhere, and you would sell the hell out of that, Greg. Anytime, any place. Like those little tiny arms going around your neck. Greg's going yep. down like a sack of potatoes, hard through whatever is in front of him, no matter what Apple type of table, table it is. full of yeah, mozzarella exactly. sticks. Sure. Those sticks yeah, are mods. going flying, man. But moss, it's a good thing moss. because of the, the Mots Act, whatever it yep. was, we ordered moss, enough. Moss, so moss. We, we, moss Mots, there we go. Tim, as the mm-hmm. you know person who knows the most about wrestling here, it, it, to bounce off of me with this, uh, I've been thinking a lot. Again, a lot of podcasts happening in my head, uh, conversations and stuff. <laughs> do you think if I got my number got called up to do a bit, at WWE, I get I get to do a bit at WWE in the ring, mm-hmm. and then Brock Lesnar's music comes down. He comes down and he f fives me. Right, mm-hmm. I don't have to really do much in that situation. Right, he's going to be able obviously to get me up and then yeah. throw me off, and then I just have to like stay out. You know what I mean? Like I just have to yeah. play dead. What's the? Yeah, I, I mean, I love that you're. Th- I love that in your mind it's already beef with Brock Lesnar because you have the established rivalry. We'll be able to have the clips to like build it all up. It's yeah, going to exactly. last two seconds, but it's going to be really, really hype. Um, the thing about the F five is selling it is is similar to the stunner where you can just take it and it's going to look violent no matter what. But then there's the people that really get into it and do the whole rock flop thing, right? Yeah, not too, and that's, yeah I fly too close to the sun on that. You know what I mean? That, exactly. But the thing with the F5 is there's two can ways you to show it. F5 Nick was asking about. It. I'm sure there's other people out there who don't know. The, the, me show it? No, Kev, Kev. Can Kev just... Oh, 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 actually show it. I mean, I'm really like upset that you got rid of like a fireman JJ to throw off your shoulder. Well, I'm sorry. One second. One, too many things at one time. You, you're mad. That, what's going on here now? The, uh, the BBJJ. So, okay, for everyone that doesn't know, Nick and Andy, I'm not sure if you were, were part of this already, but Greg introduced, like his return to Kind of Funny content was Kind of Funny Games Daily, and he decided to have his baby with him. Turns out it wasn't his baby. He fucking tosses it over his shoulder. It was just a, oh, I saw that. a dummy baby. That was terrible. Um, yeah. I wanted to make this dummy baby part of the canon of Kind of Funny lore. So we're trying to come up with the name of it, and the best uh, name I saw on Twitter was, in classic Kind of Funny fashion, What's Kevin's name? Kevin's kid name, Paula Paula. What's Tim's kid name? Rimothy. It's always dumb shit. So what's BJ's little clone name? BBJJ It was what yeah. was came up with. I love it. I love and it. Where is he now? He's just gone? No, 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 no. So yeah, I, he's no, the, the fake baby is no, BBJJ is no longer down here because BBJJ skin, BJ still wears. But oh. BJ, of course, is growing at an alarming rate. <laughs> so what the good news is, Tim, okay. that we're They'll probably maybe a month away from that thing is he's like a hermit crab. He's mm. going to get out of that shell. And then we will have the BJ, the BBJJ skin down here that will then constantly be here ready for us to do something with. Are you, are you, are you, are you kind of funny to come? Greg, are you worried at all that, uh, that, uh, old BBJJ will, Oh, that's the doll. That's a fake one, right? Yeah. BJ is a real, my real kid. Are you worried at all that, uh, that your child <laughs> will end <laughs> up BJ is my real kid will end up kind of being on pace to be like, oh, wow, he's going to be Greg Miller height. He's going to be just like his daddy. Oh, and yeah. then immediately like stops at, you know, five, four, like more like like a gen five, three. Are you worried about like any sort of pacing issues? No. And the reason being there, of course, is that he is a gigantic baby. He's just huge. You know what I mean? Like when they pulled him out of gin, that was their first thing. It was like, this is a bit, they wanted Tracking to see him to be a gigantic. They were like, what's going there. on with this kid? Why won't he come out the normal way? Right. So when we, the mm-hmm. C-section way, they brought him out, they were like, oh, that's why. And so then it's still like, it's, there's a little bit of astonishment from the pediatrician when we go in for these checkups and she's like, let me, she keeps so proudly turning the computer screen and showing on the graphs, 90, 98th percentile, 90th percentile on all these different things he's in. So I, I, I don't <laughs> see it petering off. And it's also that thing when people look at him, they're like, oh my God, six month old baby, huh? We're like, no, he's not even three months yet. Like, Holy shit. There was a, when we were at the farmer's market and Jen was still pregnant at one point, one of the ladies like, oh man, what, two weeks to go? She's like, no, two months. And they're like, oh my God, this baby's fucking big. And let me tell you, this guy eats. 
Ooh, he eats like his daddy. Ooh-wee. Shits like him too. But he is a big old baby. And yes. I am not worried about it tapering off, but it could, I guess. You never know. I, I no. was really, really excited about like maybe when you're in the doctor's office and the nurse is like, 98 percentile and she just fucking punches him in the stomach and you're like whoa she's like no no when they're above 90 you they're indestructible (laughs) they're indestructible like my fist hurts right now yeah 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 yeah. are you are you at all concerned with the inverse of that right which is that obviously when you have a child um you want more for your child than you had right you want that kid to go beyond you but you really don't want it to go beyond you as far as height's concerned i have to imagine right like you don't want a kid taller than you what if this kid comes out he's six five and starts lifting and by around 18 just sure. starts fucking you up all the time and you're like this is fun are you this down to rough house dad yeah. <laughs> are you worried about this at all <laughs> he's at fiving me in the yeah, target he's just oh, please the target. stop he's like i'm the <laughs> champion <can't>. now <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's it's like who needs a hurricane rana he's just fucking destroying me no i'm not worried about that i, I you know i hope the best for him i hope he's you know big i hope i mean it's what you're saying too of like you know he's jacked or whatever man save me i've been looking for good cosplay and I, clearly i'm never going to be in that shape but he dresses like superman i dress like fat lex luther there we go we got something there he That's dresses right. like daredevil i dress like kingpin we got something there well Something's going I, on. Uh, Andy I, Cortez. Text, I text you over the break greg and did. if you remember several several months ago at the beginning it felt like a lifetime ago at the beginning of the quarantine we did a bet with uh the lovely folks at game attack who are now hang time and we won the bet and they sent you the gigantic leviathan axe from god of war and we said greg you dress as kratos you get the white makeup we do the whole cosplay thing andy you will be what's his face atreus atreus i love it i mean tim this Mm -hmm. cosplay of benny as atreus like can you imagine how adorable this would be his first halloween we gotta That's get. Good. We gotta make happened. this happen. Remember, he was a Ghostbuster. Don't try to take that away from him. All right. Mm. Uh, you know, like a really good character. Like, <laughs> oh wow, something cool. Wow. You know. Okay. I mean, honestly, anything to get this giant fucking axe out of my house. <laughs> it's so big. It's so large. And I swear, every time I look at it, it gets just bigger and bigger. It's like Nick's worst nightmare. And I, I walk by. It's also heavy. It's like it reminds me a lot, Greg. This is funny. We're bringing it up today. Of. The last time I held a giant uh, axe, the scythe. what the scythe, whatever the hell it was, in the middle of the freaking park. Like I'm pretty sure we launched oh, that video yeah. like on <laughs> the day we launched. Kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Dark, Siders, Dark Siders, Dark Siders two. Siders. They sent they sent us a, a, a life size scythe that yeah, it was too it was too big to unbox in the house, so we unboxed it in the park and then just tweeted out, "Does anybody want to come get this?" And we and had to wait like it, an right? hour and a half. The scythe had like a multiple like things coming because it's from a fucking video game so these weapons have to be ridiculous and i tried picking it up but i'm a weak little mortal and it like came back and stabbed me in the back and i was like killing myself and going down (laughs) oh god i hope that video is not still live it's well, definitely a lot for sure yeah no, no, why would we be taking that down? please you kidding me <gasps> my my, fa- my favorite memory of that one right it's funny again like you're saying it's seven years later because it was definitely i don't know if it was day one but it was week one like we were brand new out on our own or whatever and i remember you and me having this stupid life-size axe and it was in the giant box the giant casket and so we had to walk it into the park and i it must have been kevin but maybe it was oh no it wasn't nick i guess because kevin wasn't with us yet yeah, nick was filming it and so we thought because it's already so ridiculous how big this stupid thing is there's kevin showing it we might as well film how ridiculous it is to get it out into the real world and oh so God. Nick was filming us walk it through the streets of San Francisco across uh, Lincoln into the Golden Gate Park. So it's a super busy street. And I remember being halfway through the crosswalk and we looked and there was Christine and my ex Christine Simer, what's good games and my ex-girlfriend, but who lived with us at the time sitting there in her car, just like, Oh God, like here are these fucking mm-hmm. idiots who just quit mm-hmm. their job and they're dragging this thing through the fucking streets of San Francisco filming it. And it was like, this is life now. This is what this is going to be now. This has 342,000 views. Yeah. <laughs> I told you we shouldn't stop doing unboxings. You know, you didn't listen to me. Look at like- that thing. <laughs> Look at that thing. I'd be so mad if that box appeared at my tiny apartment. <laughs> I would yeah, be you can so see it here. pissed. Off. Look, I start stabbing myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you can't get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> God, to lift something. Every you got to fold from it. it. Yo, He's this thing was, it was like 400 pounds. <laughs> Look at it this not four hundred. It just you, collapses you under, collapse under four hundred. No, it, it was because I remember. I remember lifting the thing too. It wasn't that it was 
super crazy heavy. It was just it was cumbersome because all the yeah, weight was balanced yeah. in the back of it. So yeah. like the the, the 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 actual like stick portion of it needed to be longer to, to accommodate how far out the sickle goes. But I do remember that kid being like this. Hey, what's up? And we threw the back of the car, and he's like, "All right," and then just left. <laughs> he did that much. He's like, "I want to hang out with you guys." No. <laughs> he sold that for so much money. Tim, <laughs> Tim, God bless him. Tim, don't feel bad, Tim. I had a kind of a moment flying over here, um, uh, where I'm lifting my luggage, and I see like, "Oh yeah, it's fifty fifty pound weight limit." Gotta be careful, Andy. And I'm lifting my thing. I was like, this is really fucking heavy. But like, I don't think it's 50 pounds. I think I'm good. Right. Like I'm struggling picking this up. So like me, I'm kind of worried. Maybe I'm teetering on the edge. 18 And pounds. I put it on the thing. <laughs> it was like 31. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. I have plenty of wiggle room on this one. Uh, I'm. That was like the uh, that was the flight that I missed, by the way, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, just ran into a snafu, had a missed flight. Ended up spending about a hundred dollars in Uber fees. I don't. I'm worried about parking at, at an airport. The whole process really terrifies me. What if I don't, never get my car back, Nick? You know, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. if yeah. they claim it? Andy, keepers. that that gets really expensive. I found out that if it's more than like five days, you're kind of fucked. Oh Better really? Yeah. No, I'd be oh, so yeah. screwed if I tried that. Because like uh, again, it's like a forty five dollar Uber back and forth. Yeah. And waiting at the airport and being there and they're like yeah we're gonna have to reschedule and i'm just like oh no what do i and then the thing i worried about the most explaining this to my dad oh my god there's gonna be so many questions that I so just wait don't... what happened you you missed the flight or because you one of your flights got canceled i know but that was where you are now right right yeah but on the way over here i missed my flight fly i missed my flight down um hit some bad traffic and i got there and they had already cut off the check bag thing gotcha they wouldn't gotcha, let me gotcha, check gotcha, gotcha. the bag even though, Greg, I have like 40 minutes until the flight even leaves. Booking or boarding just started. Get out of did my you, face with this. Andy, dude. did you try being like, hey, can you just send it on the next flight? I tried. I tried being like, hey, what can you just leave this bag here? <laughs> Listen, I just store it for me. I'll, I'll pick it back. I don't need it. You know, I can come Lost back and get path. it. And they, they, they just told me no at every turn. Like, it was no, so a bomb. I was like, do you know who the fuck I am? OK, I'm in group two. Wow. You're like, I'm Nitro Rifle. They're like, well, we're definitely not letting you leave a bag here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that like a terrorist name? Are you a yeah. super villain? <laughs> All of that sounds bad. All of that sounds like an, uh, an FCC nightmare. FC FDA. No? FAA. FAA. Yeah, yeah, we're friends at the it. FAA. Uh, Greg, yeah. I was going to ask you sleep wise what are we talking what's your Ooh. what's your schedule like now that you're kind of back in the swing of things? And what was it like when it was at its worst? Sure. And this actually plays into a question from patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can write in to be part of the show. Madeline, aka Mad Exposure, said, Welcome back, Greg. Just curious, what is the one thing about paternity leave slash becoming a father that was majorly different than you expected it to be? I'm going to answer that question from patreon.com slash kind of funny right after you hear these ads. Of course, you wouldn't have to listen if you were live on patreon.com slash kind of funny or if you were just listening to the version we put up on patreon.com slash kind of funny, but you aren't. So here you go, the ads. There's so much going on right now, whether it's stuff you're excited about, like traveling, or stuff you'd rather avoid, like traffic. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can control the vibes in your own head when you've got a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Uh, with Raycon's new everyday earbuds, they look, feel, and sound better than ever. Uh, one of my best friends, James Burke, he loves these things. He's always out there when he's running, when he's playing his baseball. He's a baseball coach, so he does a lot of those two things. And Raycon's new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound Sound better than ever. They've got an improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for a perfect in-ear fit. Plus, you get three new sound profiles, so the sound is great no matter what you're listening to, whether it's a podcast like this one, or some hip-hop, or some rock, or anything in between. Right now, Kind of Funny listeners, you can get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash kindoffunny. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash kindoffunny to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash kind of funny using the internet without express vpn is like leaving your keys in your car while you run into the gas station you're probably fine but 
it could be a disaster. And every time you connect to an unencrypted network, you're basically giving someone else the keys to your personal data, like your passwords, your financial details, the passwords to your financial life. And it doesn't even take much technical knowledge for someone to hack you. But ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your data and the world that it'd take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past. Plus, it's super easy to use. You just open the app and press a single button. I've been using it. Kind of funny he's been using it. It's keeping our internet safe. And I love that. I love it so much. I love how easy it is to use. And I love that I just don't even need to worry about it. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash kind of funny. And you can get an extra three months for free by going to expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. What would it feel like if we were finally free of high interest loans or credit card debt? Well, Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether you're looking to pay off credit cards, consolidate high interest debt, or fund some personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than looking only at your credit score, Upstart considers other factors like your income, current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate. One of my really good friends did exactly this, and it helped him out so much, just consolidating all of his debt into one place allowed him to focus and just take care of it and now he's debt free thanks to upstart find out how upstart can lower your monthly payments today and when you go to upstart.com slash kind of funny that's upstart.com slash kind of funny don't forget to use our url to let them know that we sent you loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application upstart.com slash kind of funny all right so Sleet, Madeline's question is what's the, you know, the thing uh, that I didn't expect or that was majorly different, right? And Andy, it plays into your thing where it is the fact that, you know, everyone tells you and you obviously understand it too of like, oh, this is gonna be the most tired you've ever been. Oh, it's going to be the most tired you've ever been when you have a kid and you get into these uh, first few months of it and stuff like that. And so in my head, what that meant for me was like, okay, cool. Like, it's going to be like E3. It's going to be like E3 where you're exhausted. You got maybe two hours of sleep because you went, you worked all day, then you partied, and then you can't. You're going to the thing, and like mm -hmm. you're running on three Star hours a night, three hours a night, three hours exactly. A night, yeah. And it wasn't that at all. Like, and it's so many things I've found so far mm -hmm. about uh, parenthood are the same. Where it, and it sounds like a lame cop out, I think, but it's like one of the things that you can't describe it. Like it's one of you have to be in the shit to really understand it or be through it or whatever. But like the tired thing wasn't the okay cool i'm so tired from being up all night it was the i'm tired from constantly being on high alert i am i am so tired from being on high fucking alert and like that was at like at the hospital where it would be like all right cool like we were just on no schedule whatsoever because of course like after benjamin was born and you're in the recovery stuff like you know nurses and doctors come in at all hours they they're making the rounds doing their thing so it would be of like I'm sleeping in like an hour in the afternoon between visits. And then we're up in the middle of the night and back and forth like that. But even getting home, then it was the same thing of trying to figure out not only what Benjamin's schedule was going to be and what he was going to give us for sleep. Then the idea that cool, now you've added this kid to the mix. And obviously the whole point is to take care of it and keep it alive and do all these things. Right. <laughs> That's what they say. Exactly. But like even thinking about that ahead of it, Jen and I had been very much like, okay, cool. Like, well, we're obviously a partnership. Obviously, we're a tag team. Obviously, you know, even if you're, when you're when you're you can breastfeed them and then pass them off to me for burps, then you can take a shower and you could do this chore and yep, or, or you can watch, you know, take a, a walk or whatever, blah blah. And then the fact that none of that worked out the way we thought it was going to work out, where it was that even when they're even when Jen's feeding Benjamin, I'm there getting ready to burp him. So it's not like I can break away to go do any intense chore. Uh, when Jen, uh, Jen passes <laughs> Benjamin back to me or whatever, she can go get whatever done. But then there's like three other things that before the thing you wanted to do that you were going to go do the thing I, I've been trying to, you know, put into words, I guess, is I knew we'd talk about it eventually. But like, when we started kind of funny seven years ago, right? The conversation I know I talked about so and had on so many podcasts was, you know, at IGN, I was the goalie, nothing got by every email got answered, every PSN message got answered. I was, you know, I, I could kick it if you wanted to come show your game, even if I wasn't going to see it, I could get you to McCaffrey, I could get you to Damon, there'd be somebody there to go do the thing with. And when we started kind of funny, I had to get used to closing the computer at the end of the night and having unread emails and having things I didn't get back to and having projects we said no to that I wouldn't have said no to at IGN. 
that then it became life and you know being life of a small business sure for me now with benjamin it's this idea that i accomplish nothing all the time where like i the most mundane task exactly (laughs) that and that's the thing right where it's like the the only goal in these first things is making sure he's alive and taken care of and happy and diapered and fed and all that stuff and so you accomplish that but it means that just nothing else gets done like in the same way seven years ago I i joked around about like oh man yeah you know i was so stupid and naive like you know when we uh, started kind of funny. I made jokes about like, I'm going to take naps during the day. We're going to do a let's play every afternoon and stream every day. And yada, yada. And like all that shit fell apart. It was a harsh dose of reality. It was the same thing here of, oh man, paternity leave three months off in quotes, three months off of work. I'm going to pull <laughs> together the tool shed. I, I had just been dropping shit in there since we moved. And I was like, I'm going to go in there <laughs> and put up nails and hang things. And like that tool sheds more out of control than ever. But like, that's a big thing, right? You can extend it out to like, the dishes like you know, i feel like i any i i had to start wrapping my head around like uh, these days that like i have one chore that could be the objective and i'm not going to get it done I'll, I'll be lucky to get 25 percent of it done in terms of hanging a shelf on the wall or like i made a joke the other day to tim and i don't think we were on air i forget but like i have a new chair from razor right and it was this thing that for three months it sat down here sunday morning i was like i gotta fucking get it done i'm on show monday but i just sunday, love that you phrase it to be like dude i had an emergency chair situation I'm like, chair emergency. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was that uh, sunday morning i started building this fucking chair and that meant that sunday night at 11 45 fucking blurry eyed exhausted i was like i gotta finish this chair <laughs> and, I, and it's not and again the chair's not hard it's not like this is something in a normal day i would have been done in the 20 30 minutes it would have taken to put it together but it's this constant thing of there is always another chore that leads to another chore but then it is the fact of like okay cool jen's gonna take benjamin jen's gonna breastfeed benjamin i can't walk away because i need to burp but even if i could jen needs a glass of water or whatever it's almost like we thought it would be passing batons but it's actually you're passing 25%, if not 50% of your mind share to that other person, because it is suddenly like, even when Jen passes me, Benjamin for a nap or whatever, cool. And like, we let him nap on the chest, which we're trying to get out of now, but him napping on my chest becomes cool. I'm off the board. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, because obviously you, uh, he passing me and he naps on me. Cool. I'm off the board for an hour and a half, What m- right. maybe 15 minutes, maybe two hours, whatever it's going to be. As opposed to putting him down. And having Exactly. Him I can't like, leave. Huh. I can't walk off. I can't right. get this. I can, we can't watch TV. I can't answer an email. I can't help you cut a check for healthcare or something like that. It's like you suddenly become, you have to help the other person. And so, yeah, I now thought it was we're like trying a to danger thing. Like, cause well, we all know Greg's pectoral muscles could crush like at random. Moments, you know? Oh yeah. See, I thought they, I thought you guys were putting him on your, on, on here as like a rice buddy. Cause he's warm and like, you have like, like a sore muscle on your shoulder. Sure, and you're, like, sure, sure, over sure. There. there is that to it. There is that part of it. How warm, <laughs> okay, adorable he is. And stuff, but, yeah. yeah. So it's been, you know, it was, way, I, I've like, told, I think each one of you individually, or at least uh, it's a blur. Right. But like, this was the fastest three months of my life. Like uh, this thing flew the fuck by. And it, like, that's, I can't, it, it, that was, was so weird about me being excited about coming back to work. And it'd be like, oh, but like life's moved on for all you guys. And I listened to it. Like I engaged with the content, <laughs> but it was like, and our lives always move fast. But like those days were just blinks of the eye, just gone, gone, gone. And it, and it would always be that annoying thing of like, I'm just trying to get to the hardware store to get fucking, uh, weatherproofing shit you know what i mean and that would be right. something that would stretch on forever the taking down the christmas tree was a, it took us like four days or whatever because there's all these little things of like all right cool he is down for a nap which is great but we can't make a lot of noise so you can't do this kind of thing right you can't run the vacuum to pick up the pine needles to do the you know, there's always these complications to everything that did it so the schedule when i was off off and you know jen and i were both on uh, uh leave was completely around benjamin like you can't get him get a baby on a real schedule that early as you feel it out and go you know this is something that i know we will pay for at some point soon probably but like we are incredibly blessed and we kept telling people this and they finally were like don't don't stop telling people that because it annoys other parents but like benjamin has been the easiest baby like he eats a ton he sleeps a ton like we i would say maybe just the first few weeks had like the cool we put him down and then he wakes up at midnight we put him down and he wakes up at 3 30 we put him down and he wakes up at 5 30. now we put the kid we put him down like between 9 and 10 mm-hmm. and then he'll sleep till six o'clock in the morning now so like we're getting full night sleep That's pretty and, that, amazing. and that was something that was happening like in the first month like that kind of thing maybe not that long i think we for a while we're doing like 
nine or 10 and then getting a wake up around three, but then letting us sleep till six or seven or whatever. Like he's, uh, we have friends who are, we have friends who just had a baby and they are getting it like the every 15 fucking minutes they're getting, they're getting woken up and they have to run things and they're doing all these different things. Like Ben hasn't been that we've been incredibly lucky on that front, but even that like, okay, cool. It's still high alert all the time, everything else. So it's like this emotional mental exhaustion that also gets you on top mm. of the physical exhaustion on top of like, you know, trying to put him down and just walking back and forth with him and having lights off, but you're exhausting your back. My fucking, my back, Jen's back hurts so much from carrying this kid around. Yeah. Andy. Greg, it sounds like you want a, part of your life back okay <laughs> and what i can say is that i know somebody who's really good at building things he's on this podcast right now his name sure. is kevin koala sure i say we go to guitar center we get a gigantic yes. roadie case where Love you that. hold like a bunch of like sound equipment gigantic yeah. Yeah, roadie yeah. case it. it is super insulated it's lined we soundproof the fuck out of it what uh, well place. how what well, uh, andy how's how's benjamin gonna breathe in there a little oxygen mask okay yeah, it's lined in there somewhere he can like grab that thing take a little put, hit of he, it whatever he can put, he it, on. He can yeah. put it on himself that's important yeah, yeah, he, he, i want him to have control of it that he needs is very to be, maybe we put a little tv in there too so if he wants to watch some netflix or whatever sure. 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 Control, sure. of course we'll put the lg announced 42 inch oleds the smallest they've done so far so we gotta go things at least 42 inches and we'll be good you can line that thing in there as well beverages i'm just talking like we we kit this thing the fuck out Kevin will help me build it. It'll just mostly be Kevin building it. But it'll be a fun project. In fact, I won't even be there. <laughs> there it is, oxygen mask. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. They and need to make it bigger, though. This is a big kid, remember. Greg, you could put this fucking, you can put this Christmas tree up whenever you want to, sure, my dude. Sure. You put you put Benjamin in there, maybe like on one of those rock. Kevin, can you build a rocker thing kind of like to keep it rocking and have some sort of movement? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But while he's in, yeah, yeah, while he's in there, Greg, you could do whatever the hell you want around the house, dude. You could podcast. It, well, I mean, that's the thing is like so much of it is as well. He, to the easy baby, he sleeps through just about everything like mm -hmm. again like jen i think put up a twitter post about it joking around I, on the games daily where i was down here screaming of like he slept straight through that and of course he would because i didn't quiet myself when he was in utero like he <laughs> he came to life only knowing his father screaming so like right it's more the fear of it where we you know not that you struggle but you putting him down like the hard part is and why he ends up sleeping on our chest for the for the so thing is like taking him then putting him into the snoo like that motion of bringing him down is like that dream we all have where you're falling, you wake, you startle awake, right? Because it feels like you're falling, like inception, like he really is being moved, right? So the, you know, organics of his brain, right? All these like survival mechanisms pop off. So like, there's just such a thing of when you finally get him down successfully and tied up in the snoo, it's this moment of like, I know I could probably be louder than this, but God damn it, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to risk it. Like, you know, walking around the house doesn't wake him up, but I still walk gingerly around the house because it's like, I don't want to fuck this up. I don't want to be the Miller reason. Greg Miller it. <laughs> totally, yeah. That's exactly what it looks like, right? Of the squeaky floorboards as I walk all around doing this and stuff. Kevin, new hardware opportunity. New, uh, for, scrap the last idea I just had, okay? Brand new opportunity right here. You know a gimbal, right? Yeah. Greg, right, yeah, you know gimbals? Yeah, yeah well, I know gimbal. We rig some sort of hardware that we can lay Benjamin in kind of like maybe it's rigged on your shoulders and Benjamin is floating above you or kind sure. of in front of you. It's sure. almost sim it's similar to the backpack type thing, you know, mm -hmm. when they wear the babies on your chest. Yeah, what, what was that, Tim? Death Stranding. Yeah, yeah. Death Stranding. What oh, the hell? Oh, fuck yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I no love, way! I love the internet. If you they stole my idea, exactly what Andy's describing is being shown right now. How much, much did this rig with a kid on it? I'm How much sure does this counts. fucking thing cost? No, this a is a camera. camera. This is a oh, camera. Oh, oh, there's yeah. retro. I see. Okay, that is literally so. Like that. So I don't know if you guys ever saw Aliens, but like that's very close to the rig they used for the smart guns and Aliens, which were just yeah. like modified Steadicam rigs back in the day. That's pretty cool. God, Jim, she's looking I can't fabulous. It. Good for her, living Sorry, her best Andy, life. Million dollar opportunity. I was putting my steady, steady, steady kit glide carry two seventy three. Buy that right easy. now. Two seventeen. Just seventeen, 17. 17 easy <laughs> payments of two hundred. Just this is just a year and a half of your kid. life. No, there's no way this is fake. Bring it up again, Greg Miller. I need you to call this number right now. No, the number has three O's in it. Smooth. One eight hundred smooth. Well, okay, so like I wasn't necessarily going for. I wasn't necessarily going for this. I was going for basically the portable snoo to where 
you can have Benjamin in there rocking around without any, and Greg can move around, do whatever he wants, and Benjamin is still super still. Mm -hmm. God damn it, I'm pissed off about this. This call may be recorded for quality oh, assurance. Oh, no. Is it real? We have a special promotion today for select callers. If you are over 50, please press 1 You're now. You're getting hacked right if now. Not, right? Yeah, this isn't You're getting hacked. I think it's real. It too. Oh, sorry. If you are over 50, please. Thank you for your help with our survey. <laughs> you motherfucker. Yep. You just voted Hang for on. Trump. Hang on. Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the steal. <laughs> Damn it, man. All my ideas getting robbed. All right, Kevin, back to the first idea. Get the get, let's get that big roadie amp case. We'll now I just want to point so out just, Andy, just this so is a great yeah, idea. the first yeah. idea from Quiet Quiet Place. Quiet Place. Right? No. I, I well, really? I've never seen the movie. I don't watch scary movies, Kevin. Oh wow. Wait, okay, that yeah, is that actually is, really funny. Yeah, that is actually great. Kept saying "quiet from... place," and you just kept like, saying it. Yeah, that is exactly what happened. Wait, where did you think we? Did you not see the image that I pulled up? Hold on. Oh, is... Well, he said oxygen mask. I don't think he actually noticed that was a still oh, from the quiet so place. That's so funny. No, I just thought you googled an image. Andy, the kid, the baby is in a box that is all quiet. Uh, is that the quiet place? Uh huh. Well, yeah. no, I mean, sure. We really are that's the last of us. That's why they called it that. <laughs> Damn um, it, I didn't know that. All these people are stealing my ideas. Andy, I do, I do want to point out that, like, I, I love the idea. And I'm Thank sure you. it can be acoustically treated. But the road case is not to keep the equipment inside from hearing what's happening outside of the road case. Hmm. The road case just no, is built so insulated. that the equipment doesn't break. He said insulated. Yeah, I, 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 I know, I know. I know. Well, I just, I, in here. my brain, I'm like, I, I, does Andy think... <laughs> That road cases well, are just for quiet, quiet places for people yeah, to sit in. I was saying like maybe we line it with extra stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean. Right, we line right, it with right. a bit more than just that. Some blankets as well, Greg. Maybe, maybe some sort of prosthetic. Maybe we get Weta Digital to do a mm -hmm. prosthetic of Greg's chest and have Benjamin lay on the fake Greg's chest. Mm -hmm. sure, Same sure. hair. We do a hair transplant. We do. We get like a lot of the pheromone kind of scent, so it feels like oh, this is my father. And I'm sleeping Who's on my father's Who's in charge of getting Greg's yeah. pheromones? You know what? You know what? I'll do it. 23 and me? Thank you, Nick. Thank I'll you. Nick will do it. You guys. That means a lot to me. Thank you. I've, I've missed Greg a lot, and uh, Kevin will not let me get his pheromones. He's been uh, he's made it's that abundantly true. clear through his many legal notices to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, Greg, you and me, done. You have to go. You have to go through the 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 aim. Ugh. What are you gonna say? Yeah, I can't Nick, just say that. whatever the hell you're gonna say. I yeah, hate just even seeing the your fingers doing the motion. Like, <laughs> god damn! <laughs> <laughs> I love having us all back together. This is fantastic. I was like, don't. I was like, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't even engage with this. What's stop. funny, what's oh, funny oh, is oh. I knew I knew the term was anal glands because I remember dogs have to have those things. Said it. Yeah. No, Greg said it. No, Greg, Greg said it before me. Greg said it before me. He opened the door. He, he, Your Honor. Oh, I didn't hear. It's him, your honor, he, mm -hmm. he opened the door. He opened the door. We have a vet tech come over here about once a month and express Portillo's anal glands. You don't, you don't have to walk through it, you really? Yeah. He opened the door, but you don't have to walk through it. But for a second, I thought <laughs> anal glands, and then I thought to myself, don't say that. Say something that's like shocking, but not that shocking. And piss sack almost came out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I was that's like, no. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I swerved and I saw his... a pole over there, and I was like, oh no, that's not good. And I came back this way. And just, I lost it. Would Where that be his go? bladder? No, I think there's an. My, my, I think it's no, some think sort of weird little piss sack thing that my brother said one so. time. I don't think so. I think that's. Anal, just you're just thinking a of an anal gland, yeah. Is yeah. it the anal gland? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm Googling too, like, piss sack. It doesn't look good. Google piss sack and see what. No, don't, don't Google dog piss that. sack. Dog piss sack. My God. Dog it's in a That's not even a term. It's not even a term. I'm just getting. I'm just getting pee pads. Yeah, I'm probably wrong. I'm actually happy I'm wrong on this one. I'm glad there's something Shocking. Called that. Shocking. Oh, it's a urinage drainage, drainage bag. So, like, uh, it's the little bag they put on you when they put the catheter in, right? That would be the piss sack. <laughs> sure, but I don't think that's the official <laughs> fucking name of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, that if it's not your black... That piss sack. <laughs> like, let's just say, like, if you're walking around, if you're walking around and you've got one of those things, someone's going to point and be like, what's up with that piss sack you got there? Oh, right? oh no. God. Oh, what's wrong with me? I don't what's know wrong if they would. Us? I don't know if they would. I, think I don't they know. Would. I mean, some people would, Oh, for sure. man. God. I'm Welcome sorry, back to the Kevin Funny Podcast. Kev, right. did you ever bring up the picture that Andy sent? Because I would, uh, I would appreciate. What picture? <laughs> Do we have finalized, Nick? If his hard work, 
would be respected. Oh, I'm sorry. Really... I didn't. I didn't. Wait, that's that's what it's took really you so one. long, Andy. Oh, I, I mean, I sent it a long time ago. Okay, <laughs> sent it a long time ago. Big. Yeah, pop. but even the, yeah, I was moving a car really quick. <laughs> <laughs> There was a moment where we were doing something a while back, and I was like, Kevin is That's being uh, abnormally quiet for what we're talking about. And there it, the there it is. There it is. He's moving Very the quickly, car. very quickly. Sure. Just, just, we're sure. going to lose a spot. We're going to lose a spot. Joey wasn't quick enough. I had to act. I love I that he goes, her. this is what took you so long. And I said, well, I said it a long time ago. Ah, well, I was moving a car. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, want to point out. You made me spit up water on. everywhere, Andy. You made me spit up water everywhere. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it is the hat on it. It is it's, the beanie it, on it. But it's also you know? the nose a little bit. Like, it really, it feels like. Oh, no, no, like no, 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 no. I think even with, I just meant that Andy took the image and put the hat on it. I'm expecting this is kind of like, and I love you, Andy. You do great work. You're an amazing person. This is kind of like when Luke Skywalker shows up in The Mandalorian and then, yeah. like, that once it goes live and then a bunch of fans make better ones like fans are going to make uh, ones yeah. that have nick's eyes in here they're going to do the thing where they, br- oh, they blend in the beard and the nose a bit oh yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's it needs the it needs the muppet googly eyes so if people are out there sure. and i just want to see what the go- like the muppet googly eyes look like on this and i think i don't think I, it does i don't yeah, think it, it does because you have smaller eyes nick and we've seen plenty of muppets out there that don't have eyes. the eyes yeah, like, jan. like jan like jan doesn't have eyes students. right right yeah, there's kind of a eyes. dark spot right here. You, you see that right here? A little you bit also, of a dark spot that kind of, I feel like. Should I get you that checked see out? It. You see that? It's right kind of like um. Uh, immediately, I think of the it's dad character right who's who's got that <laughs> little pet. He's got the little cat in Bruno. No, what's the movie? Uh, Pixar movie. Luca. Luca. He reminds me of the dad in Luca. Mm. Mm-hmm. Luca dad. dad. Luca. Oh, Luca dad. is it because you couldn't see the dad's eyes? Is that why you reminds yeah, you of that? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. why, Kevin. Yeah. I can't Luke. believe that Tim saw this image mm-hmm. and thought, Nick. <laughs> but, <laughs> I see it now, though. No, now I that, can't not no, see it. Now that you see I, it. I'll crazy. tell you guys, when I saw this, I had a moment where I had multiple moments. I'm going to be real. First thought was, <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> It's so Second clear. thought is I shouldn't be taking pictures of people. No. Third, this is third thought is I was like I don't. I, now that I have this picture, I think I showed Joey. I think Joey came over during the break, and I was like, "Is this a story worth telling?" Because I'm not yeah. sure. Like, yeah. am I fucking crazy? And no. Wait. I don't like this. Is just look at this. I actually, think it looks, I actually think it looks more like me without the beanie because it has that sort of like like my hair gets kind of flat sometimes, like it is right now, and you can sort oh, of see yeah, the scalp the sad a little hair. bit. So you see how you see how. Like right here on the right side, there's that little tiny part that's happening right there. And I have my hair parted right there, too. And it's like, Andy, it's like the hair is thick, but it's just not thick enough. And it's not mm-hmm. volume enough. And it just makes me, it just makes me hate life You're every so time I see weird. it. I, I misunderstood a lot of what was happening here. I thought that Tim took a photo and happened to see this in the photo. No, he saw this But you took a photo not. because of this. Mm-hmm. That's why. Got it. Got yeah, Tim, it. Got Tim it. misses me. Tim misses me. He doesn't like uh-huh. being apart from me for longer than a day. Unlike no. Greg, who mm. left me for three months and then came back. And the first thing he said to me, you guys want to know the first thing he said? I'm on a meeting with Snowbike Mike this morning. And the first thing Greg said all year is he just comes and he goes, Wah! and then he left. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, Craig. That's that's to let you know he's back. We were yeah, on a podcast to together assert. Monday. <laughs> How's this the first thing I've said to you? <laughs> Craig just wants to assert his dominance and, and the, all over The real me. story there goes that I came, I came in. I was like, oh, good. Nick's hanging out with Mike, getting ready for uh, the stream me and Mike are about to do. I came in, ooh, ah, ah, and then it was just silence. And I was like, oh, this is a real meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, sorry, Nick. And he's like, no, no, I'm just, I'm doing a business thing here with Mike. And I was like, I'm going to go. Bye, guys. No, sorry, just sorry, just, ran, totally just random idea. I say we make a conference room uh, as one of these meetings. It's about that is where people idea. can meet yeah. and, and talk and, and no one else jumps in. That's a great, great idea. idea. That's a yeah. great, great idea. idea. Yeah. Or, <laughs> just or we, make, we make a room. We'll get we make, but we should name the conference room. Come on in. No, come on no. in. No, because then we have a guest, and they're like, "Oh, where this should I go? Zone. Waiting this room, is like live zone. one, live two, or come on in." Oh, yeah, come okay. On. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go put there. A, put Kevin. a third one. On, put a third one on there that says, "This is definitely the room. This is the room you're looking <laughs> for. This is the one. Please come." Created conference room. Conference rooms created. Thank you, Kevin. Well, I've 
but I've for got a Nick, lot for, of oh, Joey, Joey, the conference room. I've got a now, lot of on. curiosities, Kevin, when it comes to your trip. But we'll uh, we'll uh, Greg, go okay. ahead and tell us what you're about to do right now, because I'm sure it's going to be wild. <laughs> I'm also making a channel called The Max. No, let's I, all right. It, 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 let's not let's not let's not play around. I'm the Max. And no. I'm doing What's it. that one for, Greg? It's well, I'm glad you asked. The inspiration, of course, is the Max from Saved by the Bell, where people can just hang out with each other. But I understand no. that not everybody has the encyclopedic knowledge of Save the Bell like I do. Oh, so I put the Max parentheses. The place to chillax. That's that's the waiting room. That's the waiting room. We don't no, need to No, the make waiting that room is like you show no. up. Greg, Conference I'm going to get rid of that room. I'm getting rid of that room, and I'm also removing your powers. When we, waiting waiting when room you, is like I'm go, I'm I'm going to spend money. You're in. Like, yeah, soon. waiting room. You're getting. You you know you're going to be pulled into a show. You're going to be pulled into that's a show. Like the in a green second. room, right? You're on deck. Conference yeah. room. You're you're you know you're being stage. reprimanded by HR. You're winning me right. over. Should I keep you? Give you your powers back. The Max is like the place to chillax. You know what it's, I mean? I like it. It's funny because I, like I think it. the Max and I think that HBO cartoon that was hyper violent. Wasn't that? What yeah. the, wasn't that? Or was that well, MTV? The Max wasn't that originally on um, MTV? Yeah, MTV yeah. is what it was. Yeah, Sounds yeah, like yeah. like with Eon yeah. Flux. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Andy, uh, I right, see that you're Max bored. Again if you need to. No, it's fine. I see you're bored with my stories of being a dad. That's fine. You want to hear about Kevin fucking going to somewhere? What do you want to do? Well, I mean, you know, your kid learned. Why did you turn to Tom and... Hardy right there, Andy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Mrs. Know. Chat would do a blackmail. Uh, well, because Kevin's adventure had me really intrigued. And sure. it was the most sort of like this is something that would happen to Kevin. And this Kevin would respond exactly in this way. And I want to hear more about it. What, can what I, part? Can I? Can I kick this story off before Kevin does? Because sure. this, I come at this from a different perspective. As you guys know, I don't really know what happens to Kevin when he leaves. <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> no, but this is true. He's, there's a good reason for this, because and it's his fault. Kevin, Kevin has blocked me on Instagram, and we ha we're at a stalemate right now. Oh right, right? we're at an armistice, uh -huh. uh, a blockade, if you will. Kevin, every will not time I consider me, unblocking you, and he I insults me and calls me a Slytherin. I just refuse to, to, to stop calling him Slytherin. It's a dumb joke, but it's a hill that I am willing to die on. Uh -huh. But Kevin also texts me stuff. We text each other goofy stuff all the time. And mostly TikToks. But the other night, he texts me. Go ahead. Uh, if I, I can also take an aside here, what I'd like to point out for Nick's aside is that I know that Nick is blocked by Kevin. And so when Kevin does something crazy or something uh, outrageous mm -hmm. happens in his life, I screenshot it and send it to Nick. Thank Please, you, Nick. And thank you. Yes. Uh, no, case in don't. point, a few days before this happened, Greg sent me a picture of, Ke <laughs> of Kevin in ski overalls with a Mickey Mouse shirt and goggles that were the size of his head. Greg, oh, I want you to know that I also screenshotted it. <laughs> we were guys, not alone wait, in this. You guys remember I, I wore these goggles to work when I got them. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you standing like that? <laughs> that was a funny way to stand. <laughs> And again, to be clear, like this isn't me. Uh, you, Kevin, you know how much you're I love that photo. Like of you. You're standing like you're going fast, but it's like <laughs> I like I, I thought it'd be a funny way to pose, and I think I nailed it. I looked at that photo, nailed it. and I was like, "Yep, it's perfect." <laughs> like the pants are pulled up way higher than they ever would be, way higher than they ever would be. Oh it's my so, god! So here's the deal. I know that Kevin's skiing. I think I'm like, oh, Kevin, maybe he's going on a ski trip during. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, we, you know, we live close to Lake Tahoe. For people who don't know where California is, that's where Mike is. A few hours away. Kevin's gone up there before. Mm -hmm. I assume Kevin's in Lake Tahoe, right? Then I get a text at like, I think it was like 11:30 ish, 11:45 ish. Dana White just sent me a bottle of Dom Perignon with a video that is a perfectly cut. TikTok style video where all it's Kevin and all his family celebrating at a table and it with a bottle in the middle and it it pans over and it just zooms in just enough to see a very large bald white dude. But I can't tell if it's Dana White or not because yeah. it cuts right off. It just stops. Yeah. So I'm like, I think Kevin's fucking with me right now because what would Dana White be doing in Tahoe unless maybe like they're there? I was so fundamentally confused. But then I get I'm like LOL, that's awesome. That guy looks like Dana White. Dot, dot, dot. Kevin texts back. That is Dana White. And then a picture of Kevin with Dana White. 
and the fuzzy navel that Kevin sent back to Dana White that night for sending him like a $200 bottle of Dom Perignon. I may have been really drunk, and also Dana White is extremely muscular. I could not touch his... I could not not touch his chest. Yeah. You, yeah uh, right. Kevin, you look like you were in love with this man. Like, you look like you're just like yeah, a you're proud dead. mother. <laughs> I felt so safe when he held me. And I'm well, so that's happy. My question. When, you said, when you sent me this photo, that was my question of like, did he tell you to touch his chest? Did you do no. it on your own? Did he care? <laughs> I did not did he, I really, he didn't care. He didn't care. He was fine. I, right. I, I had mentioned we sent back the fuzzy navel and he started laughing pretty hard. So... I missed really all of place. this. That is fantastic. I saw the picture of oh. Kevin in the overalls, but I did not know the data thing. That Tim, is Tim, awesome. we were sitting at this hotel lobby. It was like 8 o'clock. And tell me why, where all... you were, if you're comfortable with that. You don't have oh, to. at Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Jackson like, Hole, Wyoming. Paul, yeah, we did a, like basically a kind of a family reunion. Uh, and um, we were doing some skiing, you know, fun stuff. It was impossibly hard to get to this place. <clears throat> impossibly That's, hard because... And that's what I'm saying. And Kevin kind of yeah. has this confusion as to like, what? What do you mean, Andy? Why yeah, would you well, say that about me and my trip? And it's like, well, well, no, your I just meant what aspect can- of it. Oh, sure. Like it, it, New Year's, there was a lot of issues with traveling. There was a lot of issues mm-hmm. with flights getting canceled because a lot of attendants had Omicron, and it was just a disaster. Which is why I'm still here, uh, and I actually fly back tomorrow. But Kevin's flight is canceled, and he's posted <clears> about it. I'm like, damn, that's such a bummer. And then the very, very next Instagram story says, "We're not letting canceled flights stop us," <laughs> and you are like driving somewhere. I'm like, where is this psychopath driving? <laughs> <laughs> so what happened is we briefly entertained the idea of us driving the 19 hours to Wyoming and very quickly very quickly people were like no we're not doing that and I was like okay good enough good enough me and my father-in-law very enthusiastic about getting to this place um so then we try to find other tickets because like our flight got canceled morning of like 30 minutes like as we were ordering the uber we get notification your flight's canceled yeah so it was like fuck what do we do so we spent the entire day, almost till uh, probably three o'clock, trying to figure out what we were going to do next. We almost gave up like four times. I was like, I had boarded Cecil the night before, and I multiple times was like, should I go get him? Should I go get Cecil? Like, is this over? But uh, eventually we ended up trying to book a flight to um, Salt Lake City, which is five hours south of Jackson. And we're like, okay, we'll rent a car and then That's drop it crazy. off. That's crazy. Drop it off in mm-hmm. Salt Lake or Jackson, and uh, you can't rent a car that way. When you go to rent a car, they're like, "No, no, we want you to drop it off the same place you dropped it off." And it's like, mm-hmm. "All right, I guess we will drive or we'll fly to uh, Salt Lake just City." Just in your voice, uh, yeah. All right, I guess. And d- drive five hours to Jackson, hang out there for five days, then drive five hours back to Salt Lake Fuck City. This. That and sounds so crazy because look, immediately that makes me go, Kevin, like, what's, who's to say the other flights won't get canceled as well? Like, I felt oh, so lucky Andy, that Andy, I didn't get stranded in Houston. Like, you, you're that would have right. sucked big time. You're 100% right. And that's why that was the only option that worked. Everything else was like, oh, there's two different flights. And I'm like, uh-uh. Anything we need to do, it has to be a direct flight to whatever our destination is. And there's been a lot of consequences that come from making this decision. <laughs> Specifically, we land in Salt Lake City. What's going on? It is snowing a lot. <laughs> and it's like, well, what do we do? Yeah, we don't have a hotel. It's 8 o'clock now at the time that we landed. What, what are we? Right, you know what? I'm sorry. It was 10 o'clock. And it was like, well, what are we going to do? Well, we got to figure out. Let's, let's just go and see what's going on with the cars. Oh, we have our car, and it's a Camry. And it, it has all weather tires. I, I hear that no cameras chains. are great in the snow. It's <laughs> <laughs> what they're made now, for. It's what they're the made for. purpose there's vehicle. A, Nick, there's a lot of steps and conversations that are happening where it's like, are we going to drive with this camera? We start driving. Two minutes out. Two minutes out, we're like, oh, we're on the freeway and that, there is no headlights working. And it's like, okay, let's pull over on the side of the freeway. Oh, they're just covered in snow. You got to you gotta wick the snow off. Cool. No big deal. Also, the first car that we got was stolen or had license plates that were changed out. <laughs> so, like, we went to, to like, leave the the thing, and the guy was like, that's not the right car. And it's like, it was in the spot. It had different license plate on it they they, they had put on there. No oh. idea why. I Who knows? Whatever. Oh, we switched no. cars. 
Um, so then we drive for like two hours. We're the only Wait, car on the you, road. Who did you rent through? If you don't mind me asking. Avis. Okay. Because I just I read an article about two weeks ago or three weeks ago that Hertz was like in trouble for doing for like when they couldn't oh. find cars, they just reported them stolen and people were getting arrested. Like, oh uh, shit. Yeah, it's fine. It I mean, a well, but thing. that it was like a class does, action lawsuit that happened. That, That's but that kind of makes sense in the sense that they haven't gotten the car returned, right? Yeah, but there were moments, there were instances apparently. Yes, that does. But there yeah. were instances apparently that where people reported um, having returned the car and they lost the paperwork, or oh, they called shit. in and said, "Hey, I need to extend. I'd like yeah. to extend the rental of this car." And the person on this like took their payment and goes, "You're good, no problem." And then ran it later and it got declined. And instead of calling back the client, they were like, "Ah, eh, we don't know what happened." Because that person like left for the day, oh, came back, shit. and someone else is like, we don't know where the car is. They reported it yeah. stolen. That person they, gets pulled over with no record of having called the other person. It's crazy shit. Yeah. Truth so hurts. so we have this five hour drive. It's ten o'clock by the time we get the car. We start going. It is very lightly snowing, but there is ice. It's just everything is ice and white on the on the ground. And we're like, all right, we'll just drive cra- carefully. There are no other we'll cars. Drive crazily. <laughs> there are no other cars on the road, which is you know. It feels pretty Not good because we're only, yeah, we're only, well, I mean, but like, it feels a lot safer than there being a lot of cars, you sure. know? Mm-hmm. But that um, also shows you that people that are comfortable living in that place are like, yeah. no, not driving yep. out in this. Found that out. I was, when found I, when that I, when out. I, when I, when I was trying to move out here for IGN or whatever, and I was trying to drive, and I was in that Nebraska snowstorm, it was when I was like, man, I haven't seen another car on the road in 15 minutes, and this snow's really coming down, but I switched <laughs> over to the radio, and they're like, get off the road. <laughs> yeah. So that was That's basically scary. what was what was going on, kind of. It wasn't get off the road, but like when I put that the Instagram video of like being like, "Oh, Salt Lake City is really pretty," people are like, "Oh man, you drive it in this weather? Like I'm I'm from Salt Lake City. I'm here right <laughs> yeah. now. Maybe don't." <laughs> it was like it's fine. So we only made it like two hours. The next morning, woke up, drove another three hours. Uh, it took a little longer because it was still a lot of ice there. I I was driving for maybe half that drive. And it was uh, not, you know, not a fun drive. A lot of tense moments of like, fuck yeah, uh, yeah. I don't like this turn that I'm taking at 20 miles an hour. But um, then we got there, had a really nice time. Uh, this hotel we were staying at was beautiful. Everything, no, no know. broken bones while skiing. No, no, no. Skiing went really smoothly. I had the same thing that's happened the last two times where I go to rent my skis and I'm like, ooh, I have really wide feet, so you gotta give me the wide feet ones. And they're like, these are it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God it's a, it, Andy, it's yeah. a huge problem. Because if you've ever <laughs> skied before, you know that the, the, the bindings on the, not the bindings, but the, the clips have to be mm-hmm. really, really tight or otherwise your legs, you lose control of them, so your legs will wobble a little bit. But if you've got really like, wide feet, you, you, you do them loosely. So you, you take those first couple runs that are easy, because I haven't skied in three years. Easy runs, no problem. But you start going a little faster, now your foot's wobbling like crazy, and you're going to hurt yourself. So you stop. You're like, all right, I'm going to tighten. I'm going to tighten these clips on top as tight as I can. Suddenly, you're screaming in pain because your arches are in, like inflamed. Mm-hmm. So you have to go back to the front desk, take the boots off, Tell yeah. If you <clears throat> if you gave me a multiple choice. Yeah. I love this. And the question was, and Andy, the thing happened to me like it always does whenever I've gone on skiing trips. That's two times. I am not picking the I've got wide feet, so I gotta get different <laughs> shoes or well, whatever. It's, it's like, a more <laughs> recent it's a more recent problem. Anyway. Recent development. Oh, okay. Yeah. I went down to the... But, you know, I, I ski so infrequently, both because, you know, Tahoe is not super close and it's snow hasn't been, <laughs> it hasn't been plentiful. Hasn't been plentiful, But, but like, the end of the story is I go talk to the dude and he's like, I'm going to bring you the other wide feet or wide feet shoes, <laughs> skis, and fucking game changer, man. These are so good. The Atomics, just, oh, my God. And there was this kid who was like, oh, I've got wide feet, too. Are those better? And I just put my foot in it, and I was like, yeah, it feels a lot better night and day. Skied the rest of the day. I had a great time. He great saw you killing. He's like, man, representation matters out there. Watching, all the, watching another wide foot. I'm glad somebody's footed. fighting for the wide yeah. foot audience. No, you know what was really <laughs> sad is like two seconds later, his dad came over, another heavy f- fellow, and just kind of started being like, you're a bitch. Like, there's nothing wrong with your shoe. Just stop being a bitch. Why and it was like, oh, that sucks. Huh? How did you respond to being called a bitch by this stranger? 
No, he didn't say it no, to me. He, was he telling said his it to son the, his oh, no. son. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, oh no, my dad he died. Was the bitch. He threw his zinger yeah. at you. That's great. Because he was the bitch. Greg's yeah. in prime form right now. I just had I'm a lot back, of questions. So I'm glad you could Woo! answer them for me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I was very I, interested in that. I would like to know, before we wrap this up, Kevin Coelho's approach to skiing. Because, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my brain, I imagine you like to assert dominance on the mountain. When you get up to the black, the yeah, I mean, if I'm going down something really, really steep, uh, are, we, um, are we slaloming or are we just fucking cannonball bullet all the way down the hill? No, I'm cutting down the mountain as hard as possible. Okay, I'm hitting cutting. a hard, hard, tight lefts and right, just constantly slow myself down. Hard, yeah. It, yeah. There's a big mess. I'm working out my calves and my uh, glutes, thighs, hand, hand, everything. My legs are getting worked out <laughs> the <laughs> next <Wow>. day. <laughs> I'm getting a good shoulder the, workout. Yeah, the next day, no, I'm not really using my my arms, but uh, yeah, the next, next day, day I was sore. sore. Yeah. yeah, my legs I, were I really sore. I just want this shop owner to be like, I've never seen somebody just rip down the slopes with such wide feet. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I I mean, you're throwing it around, but like, I'm I'm guarantee you, people in chat right now have wide feet that like know the pain from skiing. It's tough. It's tough. You really feel it. Okay. All right. I'm looking. Yeah, that was it. That was Jackson. Oh, and then getting back, uh, we were at dinner, and I was like, I really don't want to drive five hours. So we looked into returning the car. They really didn't want to do it, but they let us return in Jackson. And then uh, we had to cancel two different flights. But we got our t- our flight direct flight back. We were there for like four hours in the airport, but we got back to That's San better. Francisco. Yeah, That's it was a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Kev, I mean, it uh, is. I'd rather be waiting in the airport for four hours than driving yes. on icy Are roads for five. Or airport that has yeah, hot lattes totally. yeah. and magazines and snacks. Also, yeah, absolutely. the fullest I've ever seen the airport. We found a little corner where they had like a, a food court. It wasn't even a food court. It was like one restaurant <laughs> that we were all by ourselves. But like we had trouble walking through the airport. There were so many delayed flights and canceled flights Jesus. at this airport. It was just shoulder to shoulder. People like... We had to step over people to get to where we were going. That it was insane. F- yeah. Freaking Wear terrible. your masks, people. Greg, were you looking in chat to see if there's any people? About yeah, no, no, no I didn't see any of the wide foot gang here. But, you know, we yeah. have a smaller sampling size for the Patreon thing. A lot of people making fun th- of the wide feet. I do want to bring up one thing from chat that I just really love. Kev, can you bring the picture up again of you and Dana White? Melissa Hagler says, it looks like you just got engaged and you're trying to make sure the ring is in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You, you gotta understand how muscular this man. It was insane. Cause he's older. He's an older man. God. So Ladies and gentlemen, lovely. that's the kind of funny podcast. If you didn't know, each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table, coming to hang out with each other and you. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny, where of course you could watch every episode live. You could get it ad free. You could write in and be part of the show. You could get the exclusive post show we're about to do. But if you got no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. YouTube.com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com podcast services around the globe. Of course, use kind of funny on Epic Games Store. Uh, you get there, you get the thing, you support us and everybody's happy. Everybody's good. But maybe consider going to the Patreon all the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, seven years of Kind of Funny is being celebrated on January 7th. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. A whole bunch of games and shenanigans. Pizza. Maybe Andy will man up. Play me in everybody's golf. You know what I mean? Will he? Will he not? Will he ever I'm make totally it home? <laughs> I fly out tomorrow at like five in the morning. Seven in the morning. <laughs>